Hello again, welcome to Kimmel Bay Church's daily vlog. We're still in the Essential 100, but today we're on chapter 93. We're coming close to the end. And the reading today is from the first letter of Peter, chapter 1, going through to chapter 2, verse 12. Our reading today is headed, Sure, I'm sure. Peter was sure in what he believed. If you want to catch up, then... Uh, pause and catch up with us later. At the time of this letter, it's thought uh, it was written in the early 60s AD. Peter was a leader of the church in Rome. When he learns that the church is in other Roman provinces, all now in modern day Turkey, was suffering persecution, he writes this letter urging them to remain faithful to their faith in Jesus Christ. The introduction to this reading in the New International Version tells us that the letter was delivered by Silas, and you can read about that in Acts chapter 15 through to 17. The reading in Acts shows us that there are different forms of persecution for them, not just physical persecution, but challenges to what they first believed, attempts to make them to go back to their observing the old laws to go back to their old, old ways, to deny Christ. In the message version, in verse 1, Peter is reminding them that because Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, we've been given a brand new life and have everything to live for, including a future in heaven. And the future starts now. God is keeping careful watch over us and of the future. The day is coming when we will have it all. The New International Version puts it, In his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope. If they can put up with all kinds of challenges and persecution, however hard that may be, their faith will shine through. After the year we've all lived through, a living hope sounds wonderful, isn't it? It's something we all need. Verse 8. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy for your receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The message from Peter in this letter for them and for us is to hang on, no matter how we're challenged, Hang on. Verse 5 tells us that we're shielded by God's power until he returns. There'll be many attempts to turn us from our faith. It's make-believe. It's a lot of rubbish. You're a lot of killjoys. You're bigots. You'll hear it all if it's known that you're a Christian and lift by your faith. Peter wants us to live a life in readiness for when Jesus returns. Verse 13, be holy because I am holy. In Leviticus chapter 11, we read, For I am the Lord your God. Consecrate yourselves therefore and be holy, for I am holy. Before they became Christians, they didn't know any better. They lived a certain lifestyle that they had to give up, they had to change, that they wanted to change when they did become a Christian. They lived an entirely different life. In John chapter 3, Jesus tells Nicodemus that he must be born again. And this challenges many who are searching the Christian faith for answers. How, how can we be born again? On our own, we can't. We need the new life, new beginnings only Jesus can give. But we have to ask for it. That might, might be a challenge to our way of life, things we've always done, the way we speak, our previous way of looking for enjoyment, none of it doing us any good, our attitude to other people, the way we can often be judgmental, op opposite of what we're meant to be. And yet, for all of this, there's no satisfaction inside. There's an emptiness, that empty space, and we're not sure how we should fill it. New life 
a new creation. Verse 23, for you have been born again, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable through the living and enduring word of God. And we're told that the things of this world will disappear, but the word of God will endure forever. This is the word that was preached to the um, churches that uh, Peter's speaking to, but also to us. We're in chapter two now. So says Peter, get rid of everything that's wrong in your life. Malice, deceit, hypocrisy, envy and slander. You can't stay as you are. Babies need milk. You must crave for spiritual milk so that you will grow in your faith now that you've experienced how good God is. As you come to him, the living stone, the verse 4 tells us, Christ is the living stone here, the stone rejected by human builders, but chosen by God and precious to him. Verse 5, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Verse 6, God has chosen Jesus as the precious corner foundation stone of the spiritual house he's building. Those of us who believe in him, have received him into our lives, are living stones, used, being used now as just as they were in Peter's time, to build God's house and we are to offer our lives in service to him. Lives that sometimes struggle to remember that we're called to be holy, called to be examples of what God's people should be like. We should think of ourselves though as part of a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Think of that. I, Marjorie Kelsall, am part of a chosen race, part of a royal priesthood and a holy nation. Say to yourself, I am a member of a royal priesthood. I am one of a holy nation, not just on Sunday, but every day. We no longer fit in with what our life used to be before becoming a Christian. We're foreigners, strangers to that way of life. Peter isn't telling us that we will no longer want to do things that are not right, or say things that are not right. There are occasions now when sometimes in, in a little bit of um, not conflict, but disagreement of opinion, I, th I will think afterwards, I can't believe you've just said that, Marge. And it won't be anything bad, but it won't be worthy of what I ought to be. We're battling with outside forces. We're told, we're warned that, that um, we're in a spiritual battle. Outside forces that tempt us, that um, challenge us. Paul, uh, Peter is saying, don't give in. We are all that some people will see of Jesus Christ. We are living sermons every day. He will be judged by how we present him in our daily living. If we don't act differently, look differently to how we used to be, what's the point, others will ask. Why should I give up doing the things I do if it doesn't make any difference? Remember, we who have Jesus living in our hearts are a royal priesthood. We are meant to be and should be holy. What a challenge. We're asked, the challenge on the Essential 100 book uh, page is, what things make you sure about your faith? What th things make you most hopeful in life? And how are the answers demonstrated in your life? Let us pray. Lord, help us to remember that we are called to be holy. As difficult as that might be, we look to you 
to be closer to you, to listen to you for your guidance in all that we do. Forgive us for the times when we slip up, but Lord, thank you that you still love us regardless, and we praise you for that love. In Jesus' name, amen.